Hello, hello, my magical friend. It is simply 4 p.m. <laughs> this uh, Tuesday afternoon for this Tuesday um, chat. We are playing around with new technology. Ah, Keisha says yay. Neely says hi. We're playing around with some new technology called B dot Live, and it wouldn't let us schedule on the fives. <laughs> Which my humanoid nature is like, oh, I really want to schedule on the fives. So we had to be normal and regular and the same as everybody else and go to five, four o'clock, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So um, we're here. Tuesday chat. Summer of Superpowers, and today we're going to talk about, um, did your animal choose you, or did you choose your animal? Most people, or maybe I'll put it in the form of a question, um, do you think you picked your animal? Do you think most people pick their animals, or do they actually secretively choose you? And yes, you had to go to the breeder. Yes, you had to go to the rescue. Yeah, you had to go to the shelter. Um, and yet, were you just following the energy? And did they choose you? So this superpower is a little more, hmm, what do I do with that? Is that light for me? Did all my animals choose me? Is that light or heavy for you? Uh, I know, I know all of my animals chose me. And for those of you new to these superpowers and these Tuesday chats, I am a Dr. Randy Harper. I am a certified animal chiropractor. I've been playing with horses and dogs for the last 17 years. And I love playing with a little added magic to all that you already do with your animals. And what if we cover the planet with empowered pet parents that sprinkle in their magic to create more ease with their animals? And what if this superpower today, your animal choosing you? So how often, Neely added, yeah, because they were all spur of the moment random acts of acquisition. Yeah, I already had a two and a half, three month old puppy. Did I need another one? Oh, we could get into needs. I did not need another puppy. And yet, that dog chose me. That dog went from leave Michigan to Colorado with somebody else all the way to get to me. And how often do we get caught up in the stories? And I've talked about this before. The stories of the animal had three households before they got to you or they, you know, five households or this abusive situation or this happened this way. And what if that was all in the design to get to you? What if it was all perfect timing to find you? What if that was required to get your attention? All right. What if my poodle had an accident, genetics, something else, maybe it was something magical that his femoral head didn't form. So, oh yeah, the chiropractor will take me. <laughs> I have a deformity. He doesn't act like it. We don't get caught up on it and, you know, all those points of view about that. And yet, what if that was the only way I was going to pay attention to him getting to me, wanting to come live here, having something to do with me, my being, or this pack, and this lifetime? Uh -huh. <laughs> Neely's like kind of flattering, isn't it? Yeah. And what if your animals do have something that if they didn't have whatever this reality decided they have, 
you wouldn't have noticed noticed them and they wouldn't have gotten to you. And what if they needed that abuse because you needed something to take care of? Then that that story got your attention and they got to you. And then once they are there with you, what if you let go of the story? What if you dropped it? Didn't matter. Not any bearing. Let's go forward. What if we always stopped looking to the past and just go forward? Um, yeah. And yet, and then there's, what do we beat ourselves up about with our animals? I personally, I like to judge me, um, beat myself up because they don't get as much exercise as I think they should. Um, and I think they should is a complete utter judgment. And yet, when they chose me, they knew this was not a very active household. So, you know, everywhere you're beating yourself up or your judgment of yourselves, what if your animal knew that part of the lifestyle with you was in place and they don't have a point of view about it? Right? They knew. You weren't going to be hiking every day for 10 miles. They knew I would, you know, I'm not going to be doing agility every weekend. So what if we can also stop beating ourselves up about it? Because our animals chose you and they chose you for who knows. And what if the why doesn't matter? And what if you don't have to figure out um, for what reason? What if they chose you? And what if it's past lifetime pack? So what if actually I believe Gizmo got to me so he could meet up with my last standard poodle because they were buds and they have been buds for many, many lifetimes. And that's he got there to see him again. So what if they choose you? What if they choose your lifestyle? What if they choose your pack? And then you're like, well, I like me. I have these two dogs that I can't I don't want to project anymore that they don't get along but it's a very interesting relationship and why would they choose to go into that again what if why doesn't matter doesn't mean anything and will only make you crazy and kind of go around in circles so what if take a step back oh they chose this so what is in this for me and them what are we all to learn about this? What are we all supposed to shift and change with this? What contracts are we fulfilling with this? Like all this weird energy stuff, right? This out of this reality stuff that then does show up in our in this reality in behaviors with our animals. <laughs> Neely's like, must have known I'd never make them eat kibble, kibble and would let them sleep on the bed. And then, you know, Dr. Andy, why would a dog choose an abusive situation? Well, for what reason would they? If they don't have a point of view about the abuse, let's just go with that right now. That is a very difficult concept. It's not even a concept, but it's a di very difficult thing for people to look at, period. But if they don't have a point of view about it, what are they trying to show us? What attention are they trying to bring to the situation of abuse on a singular or a global global stage, let's say? So what are they showing us? And what are they asking us to change? All without the point of view of the abuse. And what if, and I have mentioned this, and this is always surprising where these go right and what if it's our points of view that the abuse is bad awful terrible that actually holds it in place and if you go and that's not saying oh we're supposed to go around saying oh abuse is wonderful and perfect and great that's also a judgment um what if we get to huh interesting choice kiddos now what do we need to change on this planet what do these pe what do people need to change what do people, what do I need to be to change this? Notice the different energy on that. 
what and notice how that takes you a little bit into an interesting point of view about the whole thing now okay this is occurring animals are choosing this they choose it i know you may not want to look at it may not like looking at it but they choose it just like we choose all of our poop um they choose it okay so what what are they asking me to be here to change this and when is it not going to be okay for this to be going on the planet that I live on to. So what do we all need to be to change it? And all from the topic, the animal choosing you. <laughs> I love it where we go. So much fun. Um, so what if next time um, you get caught up in the story of a dog that or a cat that's gone through many homes or that dog or cat that ran away from home and and that owner actually i was just talking to a client uh one of my other clients found a stray and had a chip i think i don't remember maybe a tag i don't know called the owner and they didn't want the dog back they weren't even looking anymore i go well maybe the dog didn't want to live with them maybe that wasn't the first time it ran away and what if dogs do run away because they don't want to live there and what if that's okay? What if it's actually okay? Those owners are like, nah, you know, move on. And maybe that was the animal's plan all, all, all along. I have a really, I thought this was going to be a short little sweet thing, but I was, oh, I just caught a cord. Sorry. Um, damn it. Okay. I think I'm done. Uh, our last Doberman, Caesar. I was literally on the phone with my husband. He got a call at work about a loose dog. He's like, I gotta go get this dog. Okay. And he calls me back. As I think he was saying goodbye, he's like, oh, it's a Doberman. I'm like, oh, we're getting another dog. I knew it. I knew it. Instantaneously knew it. He went and got the dog. They have a three day hold at one of the vet clinics in the, the village, the city he lives in. No, he works in. Um, and he visited him every day. I, got, I had to go visit him on day two. And then he finally goes, can he come home with us? I'm like, well, it took you long enough, right? Took you long enough. Okay, Caesar came to live with us. Fine, dandy. And I don't know how long he was with us. It could be three weeks, could be six weeks, somewhere in that time frame. He took him over to his mother's house. One of the young nephews opened the door and the dog ran out. Didn't really know his name, didn't really know these people, ran off, right? We already know he was running at large, and now he's running again. It took five days, and I called my friend who ran the shelter in the city to keep an eye out for him, and they found him. Oh, his feet were bloody. He had contacted worms from eating dead animals. He looked like hell, but they, they, they got him. And so Sean drove down, bailed him out of jail, and the dog came back. That dog never ran off again. It was the craziest thing, because how many of us have the point of view that, you know, the, that dog's a runner? Maybe they didn't want to live there, and maybe he wasn't so sure he wanted to live with us until Sean proved it to him. Maybe he's one of those beings that needed some proof that we meant it. Because uh, I think it wasn't, eh, maybe a couple of weeks later, Sean's working out in the front lawn. And he tied him up in the front lawn on a long lead so he could be out there with him. And then, I don't know, maybe not even a minute, this dog could chew through leashes like amazingness. He uh, ate through the rope and walked right over to Sean to see what he was doing out in the front lawn. Didn't take off never left again we could let him out the front door he would he never left again it was so amazing to me because i also had that point of view that you have a runner you have a runner well what if you don't and what if those animals choose you and what if you need to they have a couple checklists to see if they want to hang out with you or not and maybe they have choice to change their mind too so does your animal choose you or do you choose them? And what if that's just something for you to look at? I had some fun stories today, but what if you need to look at it for yourself? What's light? What's heavy? 
for you. If it's light for you, you're like, huh, cool. Now, what is possible? All right. I've been having fun with the summer superpowers. I hope you've been having a good time, too. Um, to kind of celebrate, I'm inviting you to the culmination of all the superpowers. And I think we might continue with superpowers because it's kind of fun because everyone has superpowers. They have superpowers with their animals. You can use them. You can sprinkle them in with everything else you're doing. You could have a little magic in your back pocket. What if your superpowers and your magic is just another tool in your toolbox with your animals and beyond? Don't forget the beyond part. On September 10th, September 10th, 6.30, p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we are doing Mastering Your Superpowers. So if you've enjoyed this, you've enjoyed the toe into the energetic world with your animals, this is the deep dive. This is more questions, more awareness. We're going to use a magic wand to change things instantly and easily. And if I piqued your interest, this is free. Mastering Your Superpower, September 10th. Um, you just need to head over to DrAndy'sWorld.com backslash masterclass. Register for us. We may be doing a Facebook group. We may be doing Zoom. You will get the details when we get closer in an email. So don't worry about that. All you have to do is register. And September 1st is right around the corner. I know most of you are like, ugh, don't remind me. Where did the summer go? Blah, 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 right? But the Magical Monthly Membership is launching on September 1st. We have been on break from Dr. Andy's World um, positive podcast. And we've been cooking up this membership for a while now. We've been putting pieces together and what does it want to look like and what can we contribute and how much magic we can put in one place for you guys, for whoever chooses it. To play with with their animals and so that's launching September 1st more details to come on that I think we'll have a link next week okay and like I said we're on break from Dr. Andy's world so this Friday we have a featured podcast one of my favorite shows I'm so looking forward to listening to this again as well I listened to it when I did it is the prescription, so the RX for outcreating your veterinarian. The prescription for outcreating your veterinarian. I'm going to give you a little secret. It's ask questions, inform yourself, and know what will work for your animal, you and your animals. It's those three simple things, all superpowers in my book, all magical, because how many people do those things? And what now can you create with your animal and your veterinarian? So I'm really looking forward to listening to that show again. I'm going to do that um, this week. That is this Friday on Inspire Choices Network. It's the featured podcast, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, and then back to 2 p.m. Pacific, which is California time. Okay. I think I crammed a lot in there. I hope you had a couple hmm moments. And if you would like the reminders for these, which are every Tuesday, Tuesday chat, Tuesday live chat at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on this page. If you write remind in the comments below, you will get to meet SpotBot, who is ridiculously cute and such a wonderful um, mascot. And he, he is a bot. So we are using technology to our advantage. So he's going to remind you so the peoples don't have to. But that requires you writing remind in the comments. And then we'll remind you about these um, Tuesday chats. Um, SpotBot's, I think, going to get pretty busy because we're going to get reminders up for the live Dr. Andy's World. So it does live, and then it goes into a, a podcast, a positive podcast. So it's a bit of a hybrid. Hybrid's all the rage these days, right? Both live and recorded. Um, <laughs> so you can always join the, that um, Dr. Andy's World on Inspired Choices Network live on Fridays, and then you can always catch it later. So we're hoping to get reminders from SpotBot up on that. We may even get 
um, the master class up there. So we can remind you about that if you register. So again, Mastering Your Superpower, September 10th. Ma Magical Monthly Membership, September 1st. It's launching. Featured podcast this Friday, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. The prescription for outcreating your vet. And the question of this Tuesday live chat, did your animal choose you or did you choose them? And if they chose you, what can you now create together? Uh -huh, what else is possible? All right, my magical friends, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here live or in the future. How's it get even better than that? And until we do meet again, how much fun can you have with your animals? Bye-bye.